moving through every mountain of culture. Uh, we are about to get into the mountain of government um, because all of you are called to do uh, really amazing things as we've seen, you know, today with Gail, with Jewel, with Nicole, um, how much, you know, God is really moving uh, once you step out into your purpose, right? Um, but as we are moving, you know, we're shaping the culture at the same time. And so as we, you know, started out our day in the mountain of the church and um, our, our role with, you know, racial injustice and just justice as a whole, you know, providing equity for all, you know, this is uh, truly what the mountain of government is here for. And so um, I want to welcome my next guest. Uh, Mr. Andre Dickens for Atlanta. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Shift Summit, Andre. I'm so glad you made it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Glad you invited me and glad to be here. I've been running all day. I, I had know. two churches, did two churches, Ebenezer and my own church, uh, New Horizon. Wow. And then I had a, a forum, a debate. Uh, right. So now I'm here and then I got a fundraiser wow. in the hour. <laughs> yes. Well, we value your time today. Um, it's so um, amazing how this is all connected. Um, I interviewed Shanti Das from Silence to Shame yesterday who talked about her pastor from Ebenezer Baptist Church and, and her journey and how influential um, it was in the work that she's doing. Um, and as you're moving in the mountain of government, I have to just first to say I'm so proud of you and, and all the work that you're doing uh, for our community. Um, I know Andre from back in the days at Georgia Tech. I'm going to say back in the days. It, it seems a long time ago, but, um, you know, you have accomplished so much just with serving the city of Atlanta on Atlanta City Council and now running for mayor. Um, and we're five weeks away from election day. I mean, it's coming up so soon. I mean, how do you feel and, and what support do you need for your campaign in this home stretch? Yeah, so I feel fantastic. Um, this has been a wonderful opportunity to go around the city, sharing my vision for Atlanta, you know, loving on my city that I was born and raised in and getting yeah. input, getting advice and information from all walks of life in Atlanta. I mean, I've been talking with uh, ministers uh, You know, mm. on Friday. Several ministers came out to endorse me at my church. They stood with me. We wow. spoke about integrity and about having someone mm. of faith to be able to lead the city. So mm. I've worked with nonprofits, uh, educational mm. leaders, and of course, the business community and neighborhood associations done so many meetings, walking and talking and just going around the city. So I feel fantastic because it's basically just a great, you know, a great uh, conversation that we're having together across right. you know, thousands of people. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Something I recently learned about you, you know, one of your many roles um, has been a deacon at your church. Yeah. Um, and so um, I would love to know how your faith has played a role in your path in government and as you're pursuing the office of mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask to answer the first part of your other question. What do I need? I need votes. I need oh, you to yeah. go uh, yeah, of Andre for <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Andre for Atlanta dot com. And then you can go there and you can volunteer or you can even give money even from all over the the United States, you can give twenty dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. It all adds up. So that's one way mm, to do that. But but how my faith informs me is, you know, I've lived a life of service before I became a city council member. Um, mm. So I've been a city council member for eight years. But my my and, and actually the pastor said this the other day uh, when they were endorsing me. They were like, I've seen Andre sweep the floors. I've seen Andre teach wow. Sunday school and help the kids and, and put pick up the chairs and put down the chairs and move the tables and uh, serve, serve the least of these with food and clothes, yes. work with HIV AIDS, um, you know, uh, individuals uh, experiencing homelessness as well. I've been out there in the streets and helping give away backpacks and, you know, teaching and tutoring and after school programs. And so um, mm -hmm. being a teacher of a church has really informed my public service because I listen and I'm attentive to the, to the needs of the community. I have a strong 
uh, connection to senior citizens because of all the things that they provide uh, mm -hmm. uh, they have provided us over the years. So I think about them as like church members and say, I'm right. going to be I'm going to be there for you. I, I see your plight. I hear your needs and I jump into action as a public servant. Yes, that's amazing. And everyone can say that, you know, and the heart of service, I feel, is such a huge differentiator because you you literally seen the path that everyone's walking on, but you have the heart to serve. And I think that that needs to be brought back into government, right? The heart to serve, yeah. like, to serve the people. And, um, you know, one of the um, many roles of the Mountain of Government um, is to also provide a just and fair level playing field for everyone, right? There's so much, you know, um, work to be done when it comes to equity, when it comes to justice, when it comes to service. And I can truly say you have done all of that. You have really walked out the path that you're talking about. Um, and so as we talk about all the different mountains today, you know, we just talked about the mountain of business and you've been a business owner. I'm a business owner. Um, and so uh, one of the roles that, you know, our government should play is ensuring that, you know, we have the resources that we need to prosper. Um, mm -hmm. So I would love to hear about your plans to support business owners economically um, so that we can all thrive and produce wealth, you know, that will contribute to the city's, you know, growth as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my business experience was uh, very instrumental in how I see the role of government in uh, supporting small and middle sized businesses. Um, I, I grew up to a mother that uh, was a union worker and I became the first in my family to go to college when I went to Georgia Tech. So college transformed my life with technology and all those things. But there's also an opportunity for entrepreneurship that sprouted up into me at an early age. And so I started doing mm -hmm. events and parties and uh, promotions. And I also had a, um, a furniture business that I started uh, shortly after I was uh, graduated college in 2000. Uh, well, I forget, 2002, I started a business called City Living Home Furnishings. And I ran that business for nine years, uh, grew to 20 plus employees, three locations, multi-million dollar business from scratch at uh, delivery wow. trucks. And, and I hired who I, you know, I hired and promoted people and trained them. Ex-offenders worked in my warehouse, had keys to my my buildings and my and my uh, trucks, building trust. Uh, across every employee, we had health insurance and all those things um, uh, for our employees. So uh, my small business, it, it, you know, legislation and policy and platform is one built on experience. Um, I believe that part of the, the racial wealth gap can be overcome through having more minority black owned small businesses, uh, women owned businesses particularly as well. This is a way for, you know, 50, you know, about 50 percent of the jobs are through small businesses. We, we spend so much time yeah. thinking about the large businesses, but the small businesses hire about, you know, 40 to 50 percent of our workforce. And so when black businesses start, they tend to hire from the community. And that's usually African-Americans that then help feed their families, et cetera. The role yeah. of government is to you know, you know, be helpful and get out of the way at the same time. So <laughs> right. make it easy, easy to get a business license, make it cheaper to get bu uh, building permits and all sorts of things that government functions provide. We should really streamline those things and make it easy so that business folks don't have to be in the business of government. They just be in the business of the business. Um, so being right. able to get out of their way and providing them safe environments to operate in, clean streets and you know, all the amenities and natural uh, environmental things that they need. So do our part and then the business can just figure it out from there. But in addition to that, have incentive packages. Uh, we've done a lot with our uh, CARES money that came through the pandemic and also now our American uh, Recovery Plan, uh, Recovery Plan Act that's out there. Uh, we're doing uh, money to make sure that uh, small businesses have permanently affordable rents if they need a location, um, helping them with grants to be able to pay employees through this pandemic if necessary, um, and so on and so forth. So I've done a lot in boosting small business. I mean, and then the final thing I'll say is even advertising that 
you know, small businesses exist and what they do. Uh, what I've been uh, instrumental in doing is making sure that the government, whenever we need to procure something, that we don't just look to who's most convenient and the largest, but we look to small businesses. If we're ordering lunch, we're ordering it from a local small black business. If we're yeah. providing um, food to kids or food to seniors, we're doing it with a local caterer that hires people locally. Uh, I published mm -hmm. 300 black restaurants in Atlanta. You can go to my website, Andre for Atlanta. You'll see 300 local black owned restaurants in Atlanta. Um, and that's a way to promote them and say, hey, use these restaurants. Right. Don't, don't forget about all these opportunities. We got them categorized by barbecue, seafood, American, dessert, coffee, et cetera. So, so on and so forth is what I say. Yes, yes. And and that's so needed because what I what I'm experiencing this dynamic in our country and even in the city sometimes is that we have to demand from the government what we need when, you know, there should be a plan in place already uh, mm -hmm. again to serve, you know, the local community. And that's what I hear you saying. I love that, you know, one of your best qualities is to listen, like listen to the problems that need to be solved. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, we can potentially have someone who listens to our needs and actually gets the job done so that we can, right. again, go on and, and build wealth, like what we're called to do. Um, and so it's very impactful for business. Um, I want to shift to family because family is a huge foundation and it's the, the building block for our society, actually. Um, and when the family breaks down, it opens the door for all types of social problems, like what we're seeing um, in our in our nation. And we're going to talk about this even more later today. Um, but what are your plans for helping families in Atlanta to have, you know, better support, you know, because it's been a struggle, you know, for so many for so long? Yeah, I, see, I personally believe that family is God's secret weapon. It's a it's a, it's his secret weapon. The way families operate, look out for one another, share ideas, raise up a child and train mm -hmm. each other in the way of the Lord, in the way of community. I think it's the first village family. Yeah. You know, if, if it takes a village, well, it takes a family first to start the village, to be a part of the village. Where do you sleep at night? You sleep with your family generally. And so mm -hmm. I think. Um, making sure that families are at the hallmark and center of platforms is important um, because, um, you know, when the family breaks down, you know, we end up having to use social constructs to help build up the family or those, or those youth, those kids or those seniors. Um, I, I love how in the past we had multiple, multiple generations living in one home because no one was going to leave anyone left out. Grandmother gets old. Right moves back into the family uh, household and we take care of her so she's not by herself. Same for grandfather, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even if somebody falls on hard time, somebody uh, ends up, you know, not being able to perform as a parent, the cousins, the aunts, the others take over and help out. Right. So part of this is modeling and being responsive to the communities that are closest to me, my family, my friends, uh, being able to model, hey, how do you work together as a family unit? How do you inspire and engage family um, and do family well? Um, mm -hmm. Also in the city of Atlanta, because we have a school system of about 50,000 kids, mm. it's important families to be a part of the conversation because one of the social determinants of, of health and uh, educational outcomes is all about where you live and how your family is taking care of things. And so, you know, one of the key things that leads to low to kids lower performance in schools is if they move two or three times in a school year. School mm. mobility, youth mobility, <clears throat> uh, trans, tra transient nature of a child means they have to meet a new teacher, meet a new system, right. a new set of kids. Um, usually, when folks move, they're moving, you know, out of a, you know, from one low uh, first month rent, you know, free or half month rent free. They're just going to wherever is cheapest. They may go to sleep on somebody's couch. They may go to another family member's house. They may go to wherever the rent is cheapest, and then that kid has to suffer the consequences of now having to learn right. a new a new system. 
prove themselves yeah. in a new environment, meet new friends. Sometimes that's happening two or three times in a in a academic year. So nice. stabilizing the family with affordable housing, stabilizing yeah. the family with the supportive constructs like jobs, job training for the parents, true mm -hmm. economic mobility options for them to be able to thrive in this economy and not just and not just uh, survive. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, if it, it feels like you know, in our culture, you know, um, the family has been forgotten. It's like you know, everyone's chasing, you know, or or trying to survive, but no one's thinking how the family is being preserved, and especially our youth, right? Because mm -hmm. you made a, a phenomenal point that you know, when they when they are not stable, when they have no structure, when they don't have any solid foundation you know, that disrupts, you know, their potential, um, which which may also be contributing to violence and crime. You know, we talked about that, like how, you know, the issues with crime and violence in Atlanta is, is also a concern. Um, and so it seems like you're getting to the root of things. Um, and that's what I love um, about you, Andre. You're a fundamentalist. Like you you have, you know, the, ba the basic principles and, and I feel, you know, God has been emphasizing getting back to the basics. Like, again, let's restore the family unit. Let's get everyone stable housing. Let's get everyone jobs. Yeah. Let's support business owners. Let's get back to the basics. It's not all about politics. It's about serving the people. Um, so what are what are the, the principles and the fundamentals? Any other things that you see that, you know, Atlanta needs to get back to? Yeah, so uh, I thank you for calling me a fundamentalist. There is a bunch of back to the basics that we need. You know, I'm not afraid of new ideas. I'm not afraid of old ideas. You know, um, you know, I, I, you know, being raised in the church and going to Sunday school since I was five or six years old, those Old Testament stories and New Testament stories of how ordinary people. Uh, performed extraordinary acts. Oh, yeah. These Davids yeah. and Ruths yeah. and Moses and Aaron and you know Noah and you know so on and so forth. All of these things are reminders to me that you know you handle what you're supposed to handle, and God will take care of the rest. Having right. the basics covered, um, you know, living a life that's um, you know, I, I'm not afraid of prosperity. I, I believe that people can thrive and have, you know, lots of uh, great wealth. Mm -hmm. And um, but I'm also still a big, you know, proponent of giving back your tithes, uh, yeah. support using your time and effort and, and, and talent for the benefit of others, um, being able to be sober in your thinking about issues and not be caught up with the winds of the times. The current times are housewives. Uh, reality show uh, issues that you know drive us towards a certain way of thinking that everything is about well it's just about me and I got to get this bag. Um, you right. can you can be a family person and have a wonderful life and uh, amass great wealth for multi generations to come, um, yes. but you know doing it for self is 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 not. Um, something that I look 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 at favorably. I don't admire those that are selfish or that only put on for their basic needs or just their family. Um, I think that there's a um, you know we, we we're all intertwined in a um, you know a mutual a garment of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly affects all others indirectly. That's a Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King quote, and so you can't just get yours and forget others. And so, yeah, as a fundamentalist, right. if you will, I believe that we're tied together. So we have to we have to look out for one another and cover the basics um, for everyone. Again, yes, absolutely. And again, um, Dr. King has been emphasized a lot today, actually. Uh, so I think there's something, you know, foundational even, you know, from his work and in the civil rights movement and um, carrying on uh, legacies. You know, we started our day talking about 
picking up mantles, caring for destinies. And I know there's a lot that he started that hopefully, you know, the administration in the city of Atlanta can carry forth because it's very true. It's very necessary uh, to mm -hmm. get back to these basic things. So is there anything else you would like to share? We have a lot of people watching today. Um, we are all here to support your work, your campaign in this final stretch. Um, so there's, is there anything you'd like to share? Yeah, I'd like to share one that I uh, just, you know, I'm just honored to be a part of this. And I thank you. I applaud you for the work that you are doing, the things that you have started, the uh, the, the legacy that you've already uh, been keeping. And, you know, you're, you're a model uh, for a lot of people. People want to see be you know be a part of what you're doing as a as a mother as a wife as a business owner someone that's mm -hmm. a founder of a startup and using your message and your platform to glorify god and to also bring about necessary conversations and um culture shifts i think um mm -hmm. you're on to something and i'm proud of you and um you. you know you know yeah I've, I've known you since you were a student Right, and, you see me grow, uh, grow up, right? <laughs> you grow up, and look at you—you you got me. You know, you asking me questions when, when, when the roles were reversed to have you be ready, asking right. you questions about what your future is. But I'm inspired and motivated by you, and so, um, yeah, I hope that you know people look at government as an opportunity for them to run for office to make the change they want to see. That's what I did yes. I think years ago when I ran for city council. I ran against an incumbent. He had been in for three terms. I felt like he wasn't doing uh, as much service as I wanted. And uh, I thought that he had an ethics uh, and I proved he had ethics challenges. And I ran citywide and won. And I, and I use that as an example to say to people, I'm not afraid to confront the status quo. Um, uh, and to do it in a way by putting my name on the ballot and running for office and trying to make a, a difference. And that's what I'm doing right now by running for mayor. It's curious to me how many people have complaints, how many people say we need to change this, we need to change that. And they, they're, you know, they're, you know, laptop activists that are out there, go for it. Okay, God, you know, advocacy goes beyond a tweet or some kind of meme or just talking trash. Sometimes you got to go into the halls of government. We need honest, ethical, um, you know, spirit filled, spirit led people. And folks are like, oh, no, I used to wild out when I was a teenager or in college. So my Instagram is jacked up. My Facebook, you know, they're going to mm -hmm. dig up mm -hmm. me uh, or they're going to, you know, I don't want to live that life of scrutiny. Um, but yeah. for somebody, you know, you know, in the Bible um, and Isaiah says uh, in the year King Hosea died, you know, there was uh, the, the, you know, the, the whole heavenly host was looking for who shall we send and who will go for us. And then Isaiah said, then said, I send me uh, here. I am. Send me. He said, here I am. Uh, yeah. then send me. And so sometimes you have to go forth in something that you're not even yeah. comfortable with, it, it, fully comfortable with. But you'll you'll figure it out by and by. <laughs> and yeah. It'll work out. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you're you're a great example for us in that way, uh, for giving God your yes and accepting that invitation to go mm -hmm. forth and put your name on the ballot. Like you said, be the change that you want to see. Yeah, and so, uh, we're inspired by you. Um, and like they say, Atlanta influences everything. So mm -hmm. I believe if we can get you in office. Atlanta influences the culture. We can influence government, you know, from Atlanta and, and make the change in the culture that we want to see. Um, right. So thank you so much for, for making the time to join. I know you have a busy day. I'm going to give you a few minutes to breathe before your okay. next <laughs> obligation. But thank you so much again for joining. Um, we're going to support. So Andre for Atlanta.com, right? Right. So support the campaign. We have five weeks left. Let's push it. Let's get out the vote. Let's make make sure if you live in the city of Atlanta, call your friends, your family, make sure everyone's ready to go out and vote. Okay. Um, and, and thank you for uh, for fighting for the people, Andre. <laughs> we appreciate you. you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.
Wow. All right, y'all. We are rocking today. Okay. That was the Mountain of Governments. Andre Dickens writing for mayor of the city of Atlanta. How many of y'all know that it is time uh, to make some moves? It's time to take action, right? So this whole day, the seven mountains really came out of my desire to finally take action. You know, I was tired of being upset. I was tired of figuring out what posts I'm going to put on Instagram. Like none of those things matter. <laughs> none of those things matter. The one thing who matters is who represents you in office, who represents you, right? I had to ask myself that question. Do I know who's representing me in government? I did not know. And that's not a good thing. Um, and so you all know, uh, <laughs> for all of my ATLians, you know, uh, it's time to make some moves, get the right people in office, people who lead with integrity. That is God's desire for the mountain of government. There's so much corruption that has happened in our government. And so God is tackling it, you know, one level at a time. Okay, let's start at the city level. Let's, uh, let's, let's look at all of our local officials. Let's look at the state levels. Let's look at the national level, federal government. And let's be more intentional about who's representing us. And let's do our research, people who will lead with integrity and people who truly have a heart for, for service. Um, and I think that that's what Andre embodies.